This is your Sapton Bhartia and we are here at KubeCon and CloudNativeCon in Salt Lake City, Utah. And today we have with us once again, Tony Falco, VP of Marketing at Hydrolix. Tony, it's great to have you back on the show in person. Nice to be here as well, thank you. I mean, of course, we are here at the show, so we are going to talk a lot about Kubernetes, the whole KubeCon, the whole ecosystem. But before we go there, just for the sake of our audience, tell them what is Hydrolix all about? What do you folks do? So Hydraulix is a, a highly scalable data platform for processing logs. We call it a streaming data lake because it combines a lot of the, uh, the architectural uh, aspects of a data lake or lake house with uh, real-time stream processing. And it is 100% focused on logs. And it originated from work that Marty and Hassan Aleli, Marty Kagan and Hassan Aleli, our founders, did at Sedexis where they were building uh, CDN observability, really the first real-time CDN observability product. And what they, uh, what they found was that the cost of logs, the storing logs, was very quickly uh, rising close to the cost of, of headcount. And uh, so uh, when they sold uh, Sedexis to Citrix, um, Hassan set out on a mission to solve that problem. Talk a bit about your presence and of course you have been talking to folks. What kind of discussions you are having? Uh, what kind of patterns you are seeing? What kind of trends you are seeing happening in this ecosystem? That's a great question. So we're here supporting two of our partners, uh, Akamai, with, uh, which has the Linode cloud, Akamai Connected Cloud, which is, of course, uh, runs Kubernetes, and then Quesma, which is a database translation layer that allows you to use different front ends with different, uh, different back ends. Uh, you know, we're here because, first and foremost, Hydraulics would not exist without Kubernetes. You know, Hydraulics is a Kubernetes native application in the purest sense. We basically turned all of the, um, all of the elements of a, uh, of a database into microservices that each run on an independently scalable uh, subsystem on Kubernetes. Uh, we use decoupled storage, which is sort of the modern, uh, you know, modern data architecture that, that you see a lot. So we use object storage for our main storage, but then we have independently scaling ingest, ETL, and, and uh, query all running on compute, on, on a Kubernetes uh, powered compute. And we wouldn't be able to take advantage of the hyperscalers' excess capacity and uh, and their parallelism they, that they support without Kubernetes, without being able to scale up and scale down. Uh, and that also has a huge impact on cost. And if you want to, what I've been seeing here that's a, that that you know, see it at the Datadog side, uh, the Datadog, Datadog booth. It's really go, it's a really nice booth. What you're seeing is the cost of running Kubernetes and monitoring that in real time is a theme that I've heard. So people want to be able to not just take advantage of Kubernetes, but understand it's definitely matured when they're, when they're managing the cost so closely. So, you know, I think that's a theme. Basically, I see a real maturation and I see a lot of companies here who wouldn't be here without Kubernetes. And we're one of them. Now, as you mentioned that you are here to support two of your partners, talk a bit about the importance of partnership for Hydrolix. So uh, we partner uh, in a couple of ways. We partner with, uh, with uh, uh, Kubernetes-enabled clouds, obviously, so the hyperscalers. Uh, we currently have a uh, presence on, uh, on Akamai's Connected Cloud, uh, uh, Google, Google uh, GCP, and, uh, and AWS, and Azure, so the places you'd expect. Uh, but we also have a lot of ecosystem partners. We have uh, data partners that help get data in. Uh, Mux is a partnership we just announced. They have a device telemetry data that, that feeds into our system. We also have a partner here that we're supporting, Quesma, which uh, does uh, translations between front end dashboards and the data layer, and we're using them for Kibana to hydraulics uh, translation. And of course, our most important partner here is important in many, many ways is Akamai. Uh, because Traffic Peak, the the, the product that uh, that they white label, is a uh, fastest. It's really the fastest growing observability product in the market, and uh, and uh, we're here to help with demos and to support them in any way we can. Can you talk a bit about Traffic Peak, uh, and also talk a bit about for Syrians like Akamai and other players? What is the importance of observability? Because we do talk a lot about observability, but in a totally different context. You know, one of the one of the interesting misconceptions when we talk to companies or you know even investors about uh, about the fact that we're doing observability is they think this is a very red ocean, a very a very uh, you know, cluttered space, and in fact. We found uh, what is essentially a, a, a pocket of blue ocean, you know, the metaphor of red ocean and blue ocean. What we have is uh, a kind of data, this high cardinality, high dimensionality data uh, that CDNs, ad, ad servers, you know, uh, uh, the log line data from ad tech, um, you know, XDR data, firewall data. It all creates these really 
difficult to deal with logs and CDNs in particular. With uh, and, and with uh, Akamai, we're, we they're also a very big seam uh, provider, so we we ingest their seam data. What we're doing is handling this 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 data that was just being discarded. We have customers who weren't using observability for their CDNs because it just cost too much, and they could not get the performance they needed. You know, a CDN a CDN when you have a, an issue that's impact, impacting your end users, and you need to be able to solve that. You know, if, say you're having a live stream, a live sporting event. If it takes you 20 minutes to be able to query the data that's coming from the CDN, you can't do anything to change the outcome. But going back to Kubernetes, what we've built is a system that can scale up for large events, for seasonal traffic, to, to, uh, to keep the query latency very low and get rid of any kind of query, uh, um, uh, any kind of query competition or uh, any timeouts. And it's, it's query isolation. And uh, you know, with, with, for Akamai's customers, what we provide is, uh, the ability to query an alert on ingest, meaning that as soon as a problem is 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 uh, beginning to uh, manifest, they're able to get in touch with Akamai. Akamai has a view of it, and it's really just changed the game for the, the customer experience. So, you know, we have had some very notable live sporting events where the 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 the, the um, company that was the, the content provider was given effusive praise for uh, the way it went for the end user. They didn't know anything about observability. They didn't know anything about CDNs. They just knew that the end users had a wonderful event for a multi multiple weeks in the summer. And uh, and it was because uh, we were able to take advantage of Akamai's connected cloud, their Kubernetes, to scale up to handle all the issues they saw. And since you talk about multi-CDN, can you, in, we, we talked about that, can you discuss uh, the multi-CDN in the context of traffic we going in? Many media companies, not, not other companies, but typically media companies and gaming companies will use multiple CDNs to try to sort of hedge their bets, get better performance in regions where there might be, you know, and, but just have options. Um, and, and actually multi-CDN is almost a simplification because like um, many companies also use uh, device telemetry like MUX or their own um, device telemetry. So they're getting a view of the origin site they're getting a, a, a view of three or more CDNs, how they're performing, and they're also getting a view of what's happening on the clients. And with, with, with Traffic Peak, uh, Alchemy lets these customers bring all that data together into a single view. So instead of having five different dashboards for five different CDNs and, and, your, and your MUX data and your uh, origin stuff, you have one single view of it that you can take action on. So the power of multi-CDN is that in real time you can, you can do the ETL to process all of those logs into the same format manifest it in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a table and on a dashboard and with alerts and take action before customers see the issue. When we look at this, this multi-CDN use case, is it unique to just one, as you said, media or it goes beyond that and can be related to other use cases as well? So multi-CDN itself is, is pretty limited to you know, the global media companies, gaming companies, uh, it, it's, it's a, it's a great use case for them because they want to deliver great customer experience. But at its core, that great customer experience really spans different, um, uh, the pattern of being able to combine lots of different services into a single view, that spans lots of different verticals. So e-commerce companies that want to be able to put RUM data in with CDN data, in with uh, the, the sales data and see what is the actual performance minute over minute, hour over hour for us to be able to, you know, and, and what issues are in, impeding our revenue, especially during peak, peak times. Again, you know, using Kubernetes to scale up, to ingest all this data that's being thrown off by all these services. So, so multi-CDN is actually an example of a larger pattern as, as companies become more, more or as they move their whole business online, they're using all sorts of different services. And all of those services essentially have an impact on their availability and on the customer experience uh, that they're delivering. So they need a way to bring data like that all together, whether it's e-commerce, whether it's ad tech. Um, I think fraud detection is something where being able to bring together multiple uh, sources of data, including multiple CDNs, uh, but also credential data. Really, the key that multi-CDN points to is that the day of single source observability and looking at vendor by vendor observability doesn't, not, doesn't make sense, not just because it, it, it's operationally a pain, but because you don't get a true view of what's happening in your, uh, for your customer experience. Does multi-CDN play any role in edge also? Because we have started talking a lot about edge computer, and when we talk about edge, it, I mean, edge has no definition. We are still trying to define edge. That's a great question. You know, CDN is in many ways a simplification. You know, Akamai is really what we should say is 
is edge data, optimized origin and edge data. So, you know, like Akamai's got the security data, they're, 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 there's web application firewalls, there's, uh, you know, DNS data, you know, so some of that's edge, but then they also have, you know, um, they have origin information, you know, they have, they have the impulse product, they have, you know, a ton of different data that is really, it wouldn't exist without the, the CDN in the first place, but it really, I mean, if you look at Akamai, you know, they're, 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 they're a very successful security company with a fast growing compute component. And, and it was all made possible by that initial CDN. So when I say CDN, CDN for, the, uh, for the, the, the content provider is definitely focused on delivery first and smooth delivery. But that includes monitoring, say, the elemental encoding or you know, using media tailor by, uh, by, uh, by, data, uh, by uh, uh, elemental to, to keep track of how ad revenue is, is coming in. Um, you know, with over-the-top television being able to um, uh, being able to uh, you know track how how frequently an ad runs in a stream and therefore how long people stay on the stream, that's a kind of observability, uh, and it and it relates and it would not exist. That kind of insight would not exist without being able to uh, uh, without the CDN in the first place. What is your takeaway from not only this conference, but where the whole Kubernetes ecosystem is heading in the context of Hydrolix? I think that uh, it's good. One thing that we've observed is it's going to be more and more difficult to support on-prem deployments unless you want to make the investment to support the Kubernetes and the object storage ecosystem. And you know, I think that people, the companies will try to do that. And I think there are really great technologies here to help people continue to manage things on-prem. But I think that the constant tension between moving to the cloud and moving to uh, moving on-prem, uh, it, you know, that, that you see, I mean, obviously most companies have moved to the cloud at this point, but there's still, you know, we were talking to an analyst from Gartner who said that, you know, 20% of the, they see 25 to 20% of their, um, the people they talk to are, are still on-prem. Without the ability to run Kubernetes, you're not going to be able to take advantage of the, and that means also the spare capacity that you just have to have idle, and the object storage that, that can be delivered through a third party, like a, an appliance, you won't be able to take advantage of a bunch of the architectures that we see around here. You know, a lot of the providers that are here are like us. They would not exist, their value proposition would not be, uh, would, would, would not be fulfilled without Kubernetes. You, as you earlier mentioned, you know, partnership is, you know, important to you. you. You talked about, you know, you, but can you talk about other players and how folks, you know, can use it, how they can reach out? Yes. They, yeah. So the traffic peak is the, is a way to use hydraulics on the uh, Akamai connected cloud. Uh, and that's for observability and security solutions that Akamai sells, plus third-party data like multi-CDN. But in addition, we have Hydraulics Enterprise, which is basically a managed solution that can run on any cloud. And most recently, and something that we're quite, uh, quite excited about, is that we've launched Cascade for AWS. So AWS serv services from origin to the screen, uh, you know, origin, uh, so cloud front monitoring, uh, WAF, Web Application Firewall, Route 53. We've got a few of the elemental services in, which uh, give you encoding and, and ad insertion data. And finally, that partnership with Mux and with DataZoom and others like that means that we, we can connect from your origin site, the, the logs that are being generated uh, from CloudFront about your origin site, your firewall, all that data together uh, for AWS customers. So if you're a CloudFront uh, customer, you're going to find a, um, you know, just because of our design, we didn't really talk about the design that much, but with the decoupled storage and our compression, you're getting your lowest cost per gigabyte of hot data in the industry. And um, um, that's not a commercial, it's a fact. So I think, you know, people that are using CloudFront on Amazon should, you know, would really benefit from checking out Cascade by Hydraulics. It's in the marketplace and uh, it's, uh, it, you know, within a, it, we've designed it along the uh, you know with, with a very modern sort of approach. You, you you're ingesting data within minutes of signing up. Tony, once again, thank you so much for joining me today. Of course, talk about your partners and the role that you folks are playing in this ecosystem. Thanks for great insights. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. It's always delightful, and it's great to meet you at this event. It's a great event, and uh, to be able to talk about the, this community and how it's growing with you was a real pleasure. So thank you. Thank you.